Well, hello. Want to measure your business's carbon emissions? Many businesses like yours are turning to something called the GHG protocol or the greenhouse gas protocol. Basically, why it's important is that small and mid-sized businesses like yours are starting to be asked for their environmental impact and their policies and metrics. So the greenhouse gas protocol is a quick way to get there and I'll show you how in a couple of minutes. Okay, step in. So let's think about your business though. You're super strapped for time and money. Your people are busy. So why would you even do the greenhouse gas gas protocol on your business? Well, it's because your large customers are gonna be asking, or maybe your bankers, maybe your investors, maybe even your employees are asking, what is our environmental footprint? How can we reduce our emissions? While we could get into tracking the impact of your company's waste and water usage, this video is all about emissions. So when you think emissions, most people think of these cloudy things above me, and that is the direct emissions that your company creates, throws into the atmosphere. Oftentimes it's carbon dioxide, but not always. It's often from your company's fleet. Let's say you have 150 trucks that your business drives around all the time. So we need to count how far they're going, the gas they're using, how efficient it is. So that's the next thing we'll look at. Well, the greenhouse gas protocol is not called the carbon protocol. It's it's counting all greenhouse gas emissions. So that could be CH4, NH3. So that's methane, carbon dioxide, on and on and on. So it's not just measuring things out of a tailpipe. It even counts business travel. So if you're going to lots of conferences, you're sending your whole marketing sales and sales engineer team to a bunch of events or you're meeting as teams uh, once in a while in different parts of the country, all that business travel gets counted and also any employee commute travel gets uh, counted. Okay, so we talked about some scope one, two, and three emissions that we need to look at. But how do you actually do this? What is the data? So smart people thought of how to do it I want you to meet the greenhouse gas protocol. I always encourage people to go to the website and learn for yourself. So I'm on the greenhouse gas protocol website and there's lots of information for me as a company or organization or as a a small city, for example, even. But if I click on learning more about companies and organizations, there's lots of information about what they're gonna be asking for in this spreadsheet or in this tool that they've created. There's different standards. There's the corporate standard. Uh, There's even more information about the value chain, which you are hearing a lot about these days, scope three, which is up and down your value chain. Uh, Product standards. You can even get specific guidance on scope two emissions, which we can get into at a different time, and even some calculation tools. Here's my under one minute tour of the calculation tool that they have free on their website. So how do you use it? There's information here on under uh, introduction, but under instructions, it actually goes through scope one and two and three and what they're gonna be looking at. So stationary combustion from your company, mobile combustion, cars, any refrigerants being leaked into the atmosphere, purchased electricity and transport. And it can look at parameters. So maybe you're doing your greenhouse gas protocol on just the, the year 2022. You can fill in that information. What sites are you doing it on? Maybe you have two, three, four facilities. Uh, there's even information about emissions factors, which is a little more deep, but if you ever have questions, you can ask me. This is where you actually get to start filling in your stationary combustion emissions for that year we talked about. So you would put them in here. There's also mobile combustion. So this would be how many vehicles, how far are they driving, are they using gasoline? And then that's how you get your consumption, uh, fuel consumption. Same with refrigerants, purchased electricity, that's all those electricity bills, uh, how, how much are you consuming? And there's even transport as well. And once you fill it all in, you get a results summary, which is super helpful when you wanna share it with, let's say large customers or with partners or employees or even just with other stakeholders. Now you've got a baseline for your greenhouse gas emissions from a previous year, from scope one and two, especially, and scope three, if you're able to. And now you can create more of an inventory, you can share it, it becomes a bit of a Word document that you can pass along, you can PDF, and it's sort of a living document that you would update every quarter or every year. And this is information you can share with the public. It's really not marketing, it's more information. So it's not fluffy and meant to Um, greenwash. It's meant to share your information. This is also where you can share some commitments or initiatives where you're trying to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions. 
Potentially you can talk about two or three initiatives that your company has decided to roll out. And that could be, we're trying to drive less, we're trying to travel for business less. Uh, we have implemented electric vehicles, lots of ideas out there. Love to brainstorm sometime. So here are those six steps again. Number one is gather your data, scope one, two, three, if you're able to. Source data is best. Two is do the emissions inventory, right? You're gonna need a couple people, maybe a green committee. Number three is use those tools. Number four is set reduction targets. Number five is activate measures to do those things. And number six is the fun part, tell the world. Again, not greenwashy, not marketing-y, but informational, right? This is where we are, this is where we're going. Your large customers are asking if they haven't already, they're gonna start. They're saying things like, hey company, we need to know your environmental policies, we need your greenhouse gas emissions by next April, for example. Or maybe your employees are asking or your bank is asking if you have an ESG or sustainability policy. Sometimes during an M&A, your investors or the company that could buy you is, are asking. Other stakeholders will ask too, maybe even regulatory bodies or the government. So reducing your company's greenhouse gas emissions isn't just good for the planet, although it definitely is, but it's also good for your business's bottom line. That's what I talk about every week. So if you're interested, subscribe to my YouTube channel or check me out on LinkedIn and you can see my weekly tips for businesses just like yours. And I guess the thing I wanna leave you with is if you don't track, you won't attract and retain employees, etc. All right, have a great Wednesday and thanks again for watching. See ya.